So the organizing is continuing. I'm slowly getting the garage into shape. Uh, out there, that's the little outdoor office that's been delivered. I think it's 2.4 meters by 4.8 meters, which is my girlfriend's office. Um, we're going to get a second one, which is going to go sort of lengthways in here. And we can make a little courtyard in the middle, and that will be mine for electronics and model making and 3D printing and laser cutting and all those kind of things that you don't really want to be doing inside inside the garage because of the grinding dust. So I'm slowly putting things where I think they need to be. The Riley will probably move over to there, to the middle bay at some point. Uh, this is stuff I had in my old house. Um, this will be just a little sitting area because we've got this extra furniture. The Lundia shelving there is going to go in my little pod office when that arrives. And I should be able to fit most of my electronics and other bits and pieces on that because that's how I had it in my old house. Probably keep an eye out for some sort of old corner unit or something to go in there. We'll just keep an eye out in the op shops. Um, some sort of book shelving in there. I've got all sorts of car magazines and, you know, years worth of automobile magazines and things like that. I need somewhere to store them. So, you know, good tall book shelving in here would, would help. The timber for the workbench should hopefully arrive on Wednesday, I think. Uh, what I'm going to do is bring it right up to this post. I've had a 15 amp socket put in there and I'll probably build a bench that's two and a half meters long. The pillar drill will go on one end of it. I'll leave a little opening at this end so that you can get end on to the bench and that's a good, you know, a good length of space in there. Uh, I think the mill's okay there. I've just been building more little shelving units. Same with the top of the Riley parts shelf at the moment. Uh, that thing there is actually the console that goes inside the TARDIS. So I have to decide what I'm going to do with that. I've been meaning to rebuild it for some time and get rid of the old Windows XP machine that's in there, which I definitely don't connect to the internet because it's so old now. Uh, maybe replace it with a Raspberry Pi, but I need to check if that's going to be compatible with the the controller, the I think it's an iPad uh, key and joystick controller that I've got. I'm pretty sure it is. I suspect being um, running on Linux on the Raspberry Pi, it's going to be clunky to get it set up. Uh, I still need to figure out where some of my other tools and things are going to go. Uh, this bench is actually quite handy. It's steel and it's on little little casters, but it's really quite solid. It's what my lathe originally came on, and I think it makes sense to to be able to put these kind of tools on top of there, uh, especially the roller, because you might need to move that around. The, the little folder there I might mount to another bench, uh, which will probably go along here. And I may make this bench sort of from here along to here somewhere, and I might make it deeper so I can still store things like the tires and stuff like that in behind there. Uh, the like I say, I've got these 15 amp sockets in there now, so I've actually been able to run the air compressor. Uh, it works pretty well, so it's a continuous run one, which means it's got a special valve on it down here. And when it gets up to to pressure, inside these sort of T pieces, there's actually a little plunger on an O-ring. And I think what happens is when the pressure builds up enough, this valve pops pressure goes down this pipe and it pushes the little plunger in which I think is just manually opening the uh, the valves in the top of the cylinders and it, it takes all the load off the compressor. So uh, one thing I've noticed is with the compressor going under load the lighting in here flickers. So it's all actually LED lighting I believe uh, and it's interfering with the the drivers because of the load and Apparently that's reasonably normal. Once the the continuous run valve kicks in and the load comes off it, the, the lights are fine. The other thing I noticed with this is this was turned around that way, which is damned inconvenient because you can't read the pressure, pressure gauge. Um, 
because this is in the way and also it's facing the wall so I changed that around a bit this this piping they use is really soft I think it's just aluminium pipe uh, the other thing was there was no ceiling whatsoever in these and it was leaking so I've put Teflon tape in there I've tightened everything up nicely to get rid of the leaks and I also only realized after I bought it there's no moisture trap on this so I'm getting a moisture trap to go on it but that works pretty well and I should be able to run the blasting cabinet quite well with that once I get more grit um, here's more workbenching this will be once I figure out where everything's gonna go uh, the shelving everything's up there but it's not really organized yet it's kind of sort of where stuff needs to be uh, this is all still the stuff from my little electronics room from before I've just been, I haven't unpacked a lot of it, but I've sort of been opening the boxes to figure out what's where and where everything lives so I know where it's all going to go back to. The Riley wheels I've unwrapped and they have survived okay because I had them individually wrap them. Uh, this desk will go in my little computer 3D printing room office thing when that arrives. The, the reason I've been shifting things around is because we're actually, uh, because it's rural here now, there's actually quite a big grass verge out there and we need to mow that. And it's too much to do with a hand mower, so we've invested in a small uh, ride-on mower. And we also bought a trailer, a little plastic trailer thing that goes behind it. So it'll be quite useful in the garden just for moving stuff around. I still need to figure out where I'm going to put the racking for the steel. Um, ideally, it would go up on the wall there. I think I may just need to put some timber, screw that to the um, to the steel beams there. Uh, if I use plywood and put some sections of plywood across there, then hopefully I can put up the brackets that I had and, and just get the, the long lengths of steel there up off the ground. Um, I suppose the other way it could be done is build another workbench that goes in here and have the steel all, all underneath it, but uh, I'll have to think about that. So there is plenty of room. Eventually I think the Austin is going to go back in here. The MG, because that's the car I use more often, will come in here. A uh, little lawn tractor thing can just park down there. We'll probably end up getting another garden shed for outside for all the the gardening type equipment and then I've got a ton of space for building the Riley um, lots of workspace over there the other thing I'd really like to do is build a steel um, metal working table so I'll have to look into that and figure out where to get the steel from the the people we bought this property from he actually owns an engineering business 10 minutes drive up the road so if I talk really nicely to him, maybe he can uh, supply me the steel that I need to to build a decent, solid workbench, um, which will just make doing metalwork jobs and welding and things like that so much nicer. Uh, this pile of stuff here is all stuff that's going to go to the tip in a skip. And that stuff there is cardboard boxes. So the moving company will actually come and collect those, and they'll recycle those reuse them, recycle them where they can. The shelving's looking good, it just needs, like I say, a bit more organisation. And somebody asked if I could take some shots of the, the Austin um, outside from a distance, because until now I've only had a small garage and it's been hard to get far enough away to actually have a good look at it. So. I can do that. I've, I've warmed it up. I'll take it out. One thing I've noticed is ever since I was, I've driven it around a little bit now, uh, I didn't go far. You know, about six kilometers I think it's got on it. But the exhaust doesn't smoke now. Um, before it always used to seem to be a little bit smoky. But now I've actually given it a little bit of a, a run around in the, on the grass. Um, I think that's done the trick with getting the, the new rings and everything to bed in a little bit better. So now there's no smoke, which is which is good. I'm pleased with that. The radiator water does look horrible. 
uh, the radiator was all flushed and the engine block all flushed out before I assembled everything, of course. But I think now just having it up to temperature and running a bit has oops, shaken loose a lot more rust and stuff. So I'll probably run it for a little bit longer, then do a couple of flushes off it and then refill it with fresh water and coolant and a bit more of the, uh, the bars leak stuff. I haven't really started looking at where the oil's leaking from. Um, things probably just need tightening up now it's all been up to temperature. Hopefully I can sort out the oil leaks. The one that does worry me a little bit is I think it leaks from the end of the torque tube. And the car is on lowered springs, so it sits a little bit lower, which means you change the angle of the prop shaft. And so you can, ha can have oil running up the prop shaft, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because there's a bearing at the end of it. But I'm trying to remember if I used a sealed bearing or not at the at this end of the prop shaft. Um, and I suspect I didn't, which means oil can get past it. So maybe at some point I'll have to drop that down, replace the, the bearing in the end with a, with a sealed bearing, just to stop any oil leaks there. But I'll take it outside and we can look at it from a distance. The other thing I really want to do is get rid of these, these stupid LED um, number plate lights. I was hoping they would work, but they're ridiculously bright. They're far too bright and you get far too much white light shining backwards. So I'm actually thinking I might use a Lucas style light, which I have somewhere. I've got, I've got the housing for it. I don't have the bulb holder and mount it here. So it's shining back and that may be enough. So I'll leave those on there for now to be able to get it thinned. Um, by those Lucas style ones, what I mean is basically like what I've done on the MG here and to stop white light shining backwards we actually spray painted the inside of them silver with just a sliver of, of bulb left there. So if I can find a suitable bulb holder for one of those I'm, I'm very tempted to just mount one of those direct to the tail. I think that might actually look okay probably looks better than the LEDs um, and instead of running the cable in the boot I'll just run a little cable up up to it here you probably won't see it Oops. well you won't see it if I don't point the camera in the right place but uh, inside the boot would be neater uh, actually I can run it inside the boot because the wires for these do go up inside the, the body of the car there's a grommet under there so I just need to run a cable down along there, pop it out here, light shining on the number plate, it'll look much nicer. Uh, the reason this wiring is all crappy is because of course the way these work it's, it's they're like bolts so to bolt the number plate on you have to feed the wires through so it's all just temporary at the moment but should be enough to get it vinned at least. Oh well I'll put it outside and we'll have a look. Okay, and I think I've got the camera on an angle so that it, um, just wait for the cars to go past, so it isn't distorting it too much. Um, I think it definitely looks better in the rear, the rear quarters. from behind. Mm, I think the, the three-quarter view is quite good. The front guards I'm still not 100% happy with, but I'm not, they don't offend me or anything, but I think I could definitely improve the shape there. by um, getting the, the curve to better match the tire and I think they need to be slightly fatter just to balance out although after I painted all underneath the black uh, the, the bottom there black it really helps hide everything a bit uh, and I wonder if I should do that at the rear as well but then that'll make that look even heavier so maybe with the, the bottom blacked out there, 
kind of evens out. It's not too bad from the front three-quarter view either. Uh, the other thing is I'm still figuring out what to do about the windscreen. It'll probably have some sort of V-screen eventually. I think I've mentioned before you don't need a screen to get it vinned. Oh, it looks okay from the front. So I deliberately with this car did what a lot of other people don't when they build Austin 7 Specials. A lot of people go for the sort of Ulster look and they take these radiators and they cut them down. Sometimes you see them almost even square and I wanted to keep this car looking a bit chunkier. I mean it's still an Austin 7 so it's still a small car but I really wanted that high nose and the line going down. So I don't think it's too bad. I could definitely do better. Um, it is my first go, so obviously you get better if you try it again. The inside here found a little, you can see it, foam pad there, just to stop that rattling um, from touching the body. They, I would like to get some sort of a more period reef counter for it. Uh, that one works for now. But definitely something a bit more period would be good. Hey. Uh, I think it's got fuel in it. If I can find my... My stick. Three liters. I should probably calibrate the stick in gallons, but uh, given all the petrol stations here work in liters, I just left it at liters. <laughs> it's just easier. Uh, still no passenger seat, and I'm still thinking I probably won't have one. I've, I'll probably do a wooden padded back there and just a little sort of cushion there but I don't think I'll do another bucket seat I'm not sure I do have another original Austin seat that I could use the problem is the car's so narrow the original ones don't actually fit so this one you can see I, I cut and welded it down the middle um, obviously it needs to be upholstered as well the, the guards are all still very rough of course Again, it doesn't have to be pretty to be registered. Uh, and that's kind of it. Uh, the road we live on here goes down to a beach. And there's a few people who live down there. And so it's always reasonably busy. And sometimes people use it to bypass State Highway 1 if it's, if it's busy there. So orientation-wise, it it's taken me a little while to get my head around exactly how we're situated, but I can't really see. Um, this room here is my office, so I work from there, so I'm looking out over here. And you probably can't really see it on the, on the film, but sort of up here there's a couple of radio transmission towers. And from this point, looking at them is pretty much directly due south. So State Highway 1, for those who are in Wellington, sort of runs down behind those hills there. You can't see it at all. Um, we don't hear it, but you do hear the trains. So the, the North Island main trunk line runs right next to State Highway 1. And because of the roadworks and things there, they actually slow the trains right down and they stop. Uh, sort of over there somewhere. So if it's a really big train, you can hear it starting up again, particularly during the night. You, you, you hear the locomotives, but I like trains, so I don't mind that. Um, our boundary finishes at this fence where these flax bushes are, so luckily none of that's ours. But 
you can see that the neighbors have horses and they have the cattle there oh, and you can see the other cows now wandering along there um, yeah it, it's, it's a very nice place but that's the little Austin um, hopefully that gives people a better view of it I think the thing I like best about it is it doesn't look like any other Austin 7. So, that's good. And I even like just leaving it that dull plain aluminium, I think. I'm not sure I can be bothered painting it. Um, I quite like the satin finish on the guards. It is a shame that it needs a number plate, but that's a legal requirement in New Zealand, so that does spoil the look a little bit. Um, although I could actually paint that with the satin black paint it, it's not going to make any difference because I'm going to have to get a new number plate for it and they are white background with black numbers so it's, it's always going to look a bit strange anyway but uh, yeah hopefully that gave a, a bit of a better view of it ah. Ah. Ah.